So today's um, sermon is titled Stand Tall. Um, I'll just kind of elaborate on the first slide. So this, um, if we look at the, obviously the picture here, we've got a person standing kind of in front of everything that's in front of them. And I think really what kind of God's been sharing with me over the last couple of weeks, uh, obviously I won't, until we jump to the next slide, then the main subject matter will be coming up. But it's very much, if we look at the person here, looking here into obviously what's in front of them, um, the aerial view, we've got the macro and the micro, but it's also as well with standing tall. And I think particularly what's going on in the world at the moment or the crazy world with all this um, things happening, the really the message in today's sermon is very much standing, pausing and reflecting. So then if we look then throughout obviously this picture as well, you'll probably see a lot of green and then probably to the right and then to the front and then really in the distance, we're seeing a lot of trees. So if you think of trees, obviously as being trees, um, but they're actually very useful. So obviously they, in Genesis 1, they were created, obviously by God, but it's also useful for the environment. It's also useful, gives out oxygen and carbon dioxide. It's also in terms of which is coming up with trees being planted in soil. It's part of the landscape. And it's also used for producing fruit and veg and probably a, applicable in through autumn and winter as well. You can use trees in wood for cutting for fire and also coming up as well, which was the thing I was thinking about when Jesus was crucified, he was also using planks of wood coming from, from the trees. To these really, the whole issue here is trees are part of the planet. So, so in terms of standing tall, what obviously this message in terms of forming in the crazy world at the moment with what's going on and either those that are new in faith or questioning a faith to become a believer, it's very much finding your roots in God. So in terms of standing tall, again, we've got the picture to the right, the person looking over as an aerial view, taking time to reflect um, and then obviously taking time to ponder what's going on. So you've got the option to walk, to run and to view. So in terms of walking, it's standing upright and going forward. So the thing actually, sometimes when we join forces with God, God will stand with us. And obviously it is obviously mentioned in scripture that God is our rock, he's our strength. But it's also as well, trees, if you think of a tree, a lot of trees stand upright. So it's interesting, actually, sometimes they say, obviously being a believer and God's with you, and sometimes it is sometimes very hard in society in terms of posture. So sometimes they say if someone's very confident, they'll stand upright, they'll look forward, and they're going on to their next goal. Some people would maybe class that as obnoxious, rude, or arrogant, but obviously it's not necessarily, it's God's confidence in the person, not necessarily their own confidence. You've also got running as well. So again, your eyes are facing forward, it's facing towards the end goals. And as with the Christian life being a journey and also Jesus's life on earth, it's running the race and continuing to run the race because you're always looking at continuing obviously to a goal or to reach a destination and so on. And then lastly, the viewpoint here in this slide is very much examining things in detail. If you think of the microscope, what I also sometimes think in life as well, sometimes the small things matter, but they do also make up the big things. So sometimes, obviously, if you then look at Jesus's life, particularly when he was living on earth, sometimes the small things that he did, so it could be something just maybe making dinner for somebody, shaking someone's hand, praying with somebody or healing somebody, sometimes these kind of small acts of miracles or small acts where class maybe is very kind of minor but obviously the small things made an impact on on people so today's sermon is all about trees and um, this is the thing that's kind of been playing on my mind over the last couple of weeks and I'm thinking trees obviously what's the purpose of trees and, and why are trees in the bible so trees actually 
do feature a lot. Obviously, we're going to come to the next slide, which I've managed to find different types of trees that are actually in the Bible and obviously all have meanings. But the spiritual lessons we have from trees, before obviously mentioning the four points here, if you think of trees in the Bible, what they would maybe cover such things as shade, so to protect maybe from a heavy sun. And um, they're also a type of beauty as well. So a lot of trees are very beautiful. And again, they also produce things like, for example, fruit and vegetables or any other ingredient that's maybe used within a, in, a, in a dish. But in terms of the spiritual lessons from trees, it's basically turning towards the light. So it's basically with trees in the whole used in the Bible. It's used in Genesis one, the first book in the Bible, and also throughout the Bible to the end of the last book being Revelation. And it's interesting, actually, in Genesis 2, verse 15, when Adam and Eve were created in the garden, God's instruction was, I'm going to give you this garden of Eden, but I'm also going to, and one of your jobs was to look after the garden. And within the garden, there was loads of trees. So the spiritual lessons from the trees here is turning towards the light. So if you think, and then more thinking odd enough, because I also do gardening, in my own garden, because I have a back and front garden and I also do my parents' garden. But it's interesting in terms of turning towards the light. So the tree as a tree will grow when it has light. So it's, it's interesting then, obviously, when you become a believer, you carry the light of God and your face shines towards God. The same also with a tree. So in here, we've got trees obviously having light, obviously with obviously with the aid of sun and also water to grow. But in John 8, verse 12, it's I am the light of the world. So within trees here in terms of turning towards the light, it's a process of growing a seed, sprouting, growing, and then obviously standing tall. And obviously coming up in a few other pictures coming up in future slides is there's different types of trees, the different sizes. And interesting in terms of light, there's two Greek words. There's a word called phos, P-H-O-S, which stands for light, and tropos, T-R-O-P-O-S, which stands for turning. So again, it's turning towards the light. So I will, I think it's the second last of the last slide, I'll show you some of my plants in my garden, which again have been nurtured, looked after and obviously have grown. So again, through obviously light and obviously nourishment. The next one is kind of putting down roots. So wisdom is the tree of life. Wisdom comes from God, who's all knowing. Wisdom is obviously reading the Bible and praying and seeking God in Proverbs 3, verse 18. But in terms of roots, I kind of wanted to ask a first question is, what do you think about in terms of roots? Where are your roots? What do you meditate on? And um, why do you study God's word? So obviously the aim of that is to become better well knowledge. Knowledge has more wisdom. So they sometimes say as well, if you want to lead, read. So sometimes they say as well, if you want to become very knowledgeable, the best example is to try and read two, 12 full books in a year. And obviously to learn not only for your better understanding, but more vocabulary. And then obviously reading obviously more about, obviously in this case, in terms of the Bible of the books, is the lives of God's disciples and, and God's servants. So here in terms of putting down roots, putting this into a book form would be very much that the book is giving you nourishment, it's giving you life lessons, and it's giving you meaning. So there is some Bibles um, which I've found very interesting at the front of the Bible, they'll have a particularly word search that tells you to search for different things in terms of life lessons. And I think they're sometimes very good as well because it gives you wisdom and gives you uh, areas where you want to focus on. And particularly in terms of roots here, the stronger the roots are, the stronger you have in faith. So applying this back to a tree, and I'm more thinking of my own example from my trees in my garden, particularly I have a lot of conifers, which are eventually large trees which can grow to 10 foot, particularly when it's nourished, it's fed water, maybe more additional soil or plant soil, it begins to grow and grow and grow. So a healthy tree will last long period of time, as with a healthy body and mind, it will last longer. And again, also having faith in God, 
strengthens your face. That's continual learning and development. It's obviously a daily um, turn to God and obviously asking for wisdom to carry you know, for, for, for you to be his vessel throughout the whole day, every day. The next one is bringing forth fruit. Matthew 7, verse 16 to 20, 20. We've got the fruit tree here and the fruit that we produce. So here we've got to consider here the inward and the outward. So it's inward versus outward. We've got what goes in, obviously what comes out. So again, healthy living, healthy mind, what you're spending your time on. So for example, if you're constantly thinking about God, getting close to God, reading his word, praying, it's going to be just be displayed in your outside character. And then particularly here in terms of fruit, which is getting to this message, is the fruit of God's character. So for example, such examples would be love, joy, peace, goodness, faith, and temperance. So these are the characteristics. Once you become a Christian, you get to know the Father. And from that as well, you want to then act like a, a believer. So it's that whole kind of father to son relationship or father to to daughter and from that then you will then show the fruit so people will recognize you from your fruit and then onto long term of a spiritual lesson so trees are like stewards trees will have trees are also in heaven as well and obviously again it's whole thing back to this whole roots so if you think of a tree you've also got branches which can also spra sprawl into heaven and eternity but obviously again it's Trees also are almost like decision making, have long term decisions. So they are future bound. So they're not a short term gain. So, what I'm meaning by that, I'm more thinking of my parents' garden. And as, a, as an example, I think it was about 20 years ago, they actually just took an apple seed. And obviously, now the tree's massive. It must be almost like 15, 20 foot. And oddly enough, it's producing apples. So, sometimes it's the long term you've got to consider for the, the impact of trees. So with trees as well, so we've got here in Genesis 1 verse 11, then God said, let the earth produce greenery, grass bearing seed and fruit trees yielding fruit after their kind and having their seed in them on the earth and it was so. So that's Genesis 1 verse 11. So what I've done here, and again, obviously for those listening online, you can obviously take a, a screen grab of this one. Uh, these are all the trees that obviously are listed in the Bible. So obviously we won't, um, cover obviously the scriptures but obviously this is just for your own um, reference and um, different trees have different uh, capabilities again you've got fruit you've got vegetables a lot of these trees are used obviously for eating or in dishes but obviously these type of trees in the bible are all symbolic so they're used to represent something so obviously different trees are used in different books of the bible and obviously have some significance so a few things, obviously, just to mention in terms of trees, um, it's also used as a meeting place in Revelation. So obviously throughout scripture, there's been various things where, for example, people have met under a tree, maybe business has been conducted under a tree, things have happened in, a, in the books in the Bible, so we'll, we'll cover a few. But obviously we've got here in places and Revelation, so an example in Genesis 3, Adam, Adam and Eve hid in trees from God. So this is the time obviously where they'd sinned and they wanted to hide from God because obviously they know they'd done wrong. But also as well, um, Adam and Eve, when they were created, would hide obviously under trees for shelter as well, particularly when weather was either extreme during the day, very hot, or at night it was very cold. So obviously they wanted protection. You've also got here that um, in Luke 19, we've got the tax collector, climbs the trees, tree to see Jesus. Particularly the significance here is obviously the tax collector was a very small person and obviously couldn't get over the crowd. So the only way to be seen and obviously to see Jesus and then eventually meet, meet him was obviously to climb obviously the tree to then reach that vantage point. So sometimes trees have significance. As we saw with the very first slide there, it's the whole viewpoint that you can see everything. It's the aerial viewpoint looking down or even above. And um, the next one obviously is the crowd uses trees in the march for Jesus's arrival. So again, that's significance here in Matthew 21 that Jesus was seen as the king. And from there that the trees that had significance was obviously kind of paving a path for the king obviously uh, in, a, in a parade. 
Then we've also got kind of um, Revelation as well. We've got Genesis 18, where obviously uh, Abraham encounters three people. During this case in Genesis 18, it changes the mindset of Abraham. And obviously a decision is made for, again, the future positivity of Abraham's life. We've also got Moses as well, meeting God through obviously the story of the burning bush in Exodus 3. Exodus 3. And for here, the, the issue here is obviously to liberate his people. So again, it's a word of it's a word given to Moses to impact obviously future society at that time. And then we've also got Jesus listing the end of the world with the image of the fig tree in Mark 13. And obviously this is focusing on um, the whole thing of seasons changing, going back to particularly applying to trees as blooming, planting, budding as well. And obviously season season to harvest and also aimed by obviously with warm weather, which would be applicable in that climate at that time. So we've also kind of got trees as the image of God in Matthew 13, verse 32. So this is very much focusing on where you plant yourself. So even though it's using trees as an analogy, it would also apply to your own individual life. So again, if you think of a house, if it's made in good soil or is built in good soil, it's more likely to, to stand all types of weather or all types of terrains. Where if it's a house is not built, if the, firm, if the foundation is not firm, obviously if storms come or bad weather, obviously the house might obviously uh, collapse or obviously fall down. So this kind of image of God as a tree is standing strong. So what it's meaning here is, focusing yourself fully on God, committing yourself to God, having basically your life enrichment and nourishment from God to obviously enable you to stand tall. So again, the parable here is relating obviously trees as the image of God, upright and uh, upright and upstanding. The seeds as well is obviously the own individual seeds. So for example, I'm, I'm more thinking of maybe learning Christianity or new in faith, you will start with seeds. You maybe start with the four gospels to read that. You then maybe get into that and then start meditating and praying or maybe going to a house group or just inquiring more. So that seed will then develop into more knowledge and then obviously more comfort. Uh, you're then becoming more comfortable in the faith and what's, what the, the beliefs are. And then from that, then you kind of develop into a stronger person through having the faith. So again, the soil here, as the analogy would be reading the word, meeting with other Christians, attending church, and also praying as well. So having that whole conversation with the Father. The branches here can also apply also to the gifts of the Spirit, maybe learning things, as probably mentioned in a couple of slides before, is having the confidence in God, not in yourself. Putting roots down, again, is focusing on God and having God to, to be your provider at a, on a daily basis. And your growth, again, as with wisdom, is learning by doing. And again, it's a daily commitment, obviously, as the image of God. We've also got as well with um, trees as well in Matthew 3, verse 7. It's If you look obviously the trees in the picture here, obviously they are massive trees. But sometimes as well, depending on the trees, particularly probably more fruit trees, they would have to be cut and pruned uh, to, be, to be cut back and then to, to re-bloom. Re as with a lot of plants as well, sometimes certain seasons, they don't, uh, they're not fertile. So certain, certain, you may have to cut and prune, obviously, to, to then make them more fertile in, in the future season. We've also got as well as an example with soil or with trees. Um, if the soil is not correct or the or the um, it's not being watered, the, obviously the tree will die. It's classed maybe as rotten tree. It's not nourished and eventually is destroyed. So what this kind of passage is saying is you need to put roots down. The roots down is not in yourself, but obviously the roots down is obviously your faith in God. And obviously God will give you that fertility. So it's nourishing you with the word on a day-to-day -day basis. And again, obviously, your life is then obviously committed under, under God. Think again of the lifespan of this tree, particularly with the trees here in this picture. These are very long-standing um, trees. And I think particularly what 
the message I was thinking about in the last couple of weeks with trees as a whole. Sometimes if you look at trees and landscapes, it can form a few different things. So sometimes the trees stand on their own, or sometimes they stand with a group, or even a small group. And it's interesting what I was kind of getting is the analogy is particularly with the first tree in this picture at the very front, which is the largest. It's sometimes saying that, you know, God is supreme over everything. God is focusing on everything. And obviously God is omnipresent and the power obviously is in God. And I think sometimes it's standing with God, even though things are going around that maybe you can't control in the crazy world, but sometimes it's God that all you, it is all you need, obviously, for your hope. So we've got cutting and pruning as well, we've got roots um, going down. And then we've also kind of got good fruit and bad fruit. So again, back to the whole nourishment, what are you feeding yourself on? What are you thinking about? Obviously, you need to think of God is beside you all the time. And obviously, once you start to kind of hang out with people, other Christians, and obviously attend church services and read the word, you then become more accustomed to developing the fruit that you'll find, obviously, through the, reading the Bible passages and, and Bible books. Whereas, obviously, a uh, bad fruit will also have a result. So if we think of what was mentioned earlier with love, joy, peace, the opposite of that, will it, what's in you would then obviously then be displayed outward. And again, the other references in terms of fertility, you've got here Matthew 7 verses 15 to 21 and Jude 12. So then on to kind of rebirth here, trees obviously are rebirthing, again, back going back to cutting and pruning. And I think the word here coming is the power of a tree. So evocation is very much is the response. It's the call and it's the feeling. So I think particularly, again, we're looking at the trees here. There's a mix of, of different sizes of trees here. You've got here in terms of rebirth, you've got redoing, you've got restarting, you've got refreshing, you've got replenishment, and you've also got being ready. So obviously, again, think of a seed being planted where you may be eye from a garden centre. And then obviously that then tree is growing and growing and growing once you're look, nurturing and looking after it. So we've seen here in other scripture verses, obviously there's a lot of scripture verses in the Bible about trees. You've got particularly number 17, it's looking at buds flowering and leading people. Again, focusing on God's word, day-to-day -day meditation is obviously going to, you're going to basically bloom into to a better person of a Christ-like person. You've got the renewal and holy descent in Isaiah, and you've got the rebirth, obviously, through various uh, passages in Genesis and Samuel. And then also you've got the branch from the trunk at the bottom of Isaiah. So again, if you think of a tree, some trees will eventually just grow and grow and grow. So if we look at the tree here on the left, which I think is a conifer, it will eventually just, the branches and the shrubs will just continue to grow and grow and grow, as with it is with um, God's word. If the more you spend in God's word, uh, the more time God will actually want of you, and you begin obviously to then enjoy your time because it becomes a set time. And then from that, you're rebirthed on a day-to-day -day basis because obviously you're always seeking God. So we've also got here trees as a symbol. You, we've got three passages. We've got Judges, Isaiah, and Ezekiel. So on Judges here, the trees as a symbol is to perform an action. So in this passage in Judges, it's basically focusing on bearing fruit. Within that as well, you'll have the outcome and purpose. And in this passage as well, it's talking about olive trees, fig trees, vine, and bramble. Each has a different uh, analogy of the tree, but the main aim is obviously it's bearing fruit, it's giving a purpose and an outcome. Isaiah is here, it's the highest, it's basically talking about here, as with Ezekiel, it's sometimes if you think of a tree reaches a high height, but it has to, at that point, it maybe needs to be cut down. So these two um, passages of Isaiah and Ezekiel in terms of referring to cutting of trees, it's sometimes saying that it's standing on the wrong reason. So it's standing on your own self. So you then become very arrogant and proud. 
And in these two passages, God's then saying you need to stand in God, not on yourself. Hence the reason in these two passages, the tree is cut because obviously it's showing particularly with Isaiah and Ezekiel, the sinfulness. So obviously it's showing obviously it's a bad tree and it needs to be cut. On Ezekiel as well, it does start off with this passage about being water planted and growing. But then it talks about the ruling of nations and the arrogance of the nations not serving God. So the downfall is then the tree is cut. But what this message of this kind of symbolic tree is being humble, particularly in Isaiah and Ezekiel, and not proud. So again, the trees can stand, but it's the analogy here is you need to stand with God and not on your own. And then to kind of conclude, um, we have obviously um, in the conclusion, you've got the biblical forest, the trees and the plants, as in the Garden of Eden in Genesis. You've got the trees as symbols that can also be parables. So again, the trees obviously symbolize the standing not in yourself but in God. Trees are also checked by scientists for research, which is very interesting. Um, and the beauty of God is through the trees, particularly the Garden of Eden, or if you've maybe gone to a park, a local park or garden centre, or even, or even um, uh, a garden. It's very much looking at gardens, orchards, fer, fr forests, fruits and veg. So not only are they beauty to look at, but they're also useful for nature. They're useful for the planet as created in Genesis, but they're also maybe giving you something to eat. So in this case, it could be fruit, fruit and vegetables. As with Genesis, it's God's creation's work in making the earth. The beginning, obviously, we've seen in Genesis, the book of Genesis is the creation and also the Garden of Eden, the end, obviously, of Revelation. And again, earthly trees as paradise trees. So it's interesting with Garden of Eden. If you think of Garden of Eden, some people would class it as paradise or it was known as paradise. And particularly but the most prominent relevant thing in um, Garden of Eden was the trees. So we see here, particularly in this kind of conclusion of trees that Christ has redeemed us. Um, in particular, obviously, when Jesus was crucified, he was obviously hung on a tree. Some biblical um, terminology call it a stake. Obviously, it was two planks of wood coming from a tree. And particularly with trees as well, they need water. So uh, ourselves as human beings, we also need, we are made of water, but we also need to drink water to keep us healthy. And we also need God. So as again, if we don't have that, we become dry. So as it says in the Bible, God is the everlasting water of life. He gives us streams of water. So obviously that living water is in us. Um, and then we've also got wisdom. Uh, God's wisdom is obviously reading and, and praying God's word on a daily basis. You've got the vine as well here. So as, as, as a tree grows, depending on the type of tree, if it's a fruit and vegetable tree, it needs to be cut and pruned to redo and refresh as with our character as well or once you become a believer you'll find that things that maybe you did before in the past are not necessarily as, as applicable or you becoming you're becoming more godlike in your character and then jesus uh lift uh lifted on a tree and obviously it's more focusing obviously on the eternal life so in john 12 verse 32 is and when I am lifted up from earth, I will draw all the people to myself. So here in terms of the Messiah's life, he gives us life. The sacrifice is the sin is forgiven. And the tree symbolizes uh, us to look up heavenward and towards God's word. And then on kind of conclusion here, so obviously the picture here is odd enough from my garden. The, the conifer in the middle, obviously the light green plant, is obviously being nurtured. So basically I bought that when it was very small and obviously it's attending to it. And obviously it then eventually it becomes um, larger and larger. And again, in most cases, you've got to cut and prune it to keep it obviously uh, well nourished. So we've got here standing tall, upright and forward. As I mentioned, I think it was in the first or second slide. I think sometimes you have to think in terms of standing God, that God is with you everywhere. And again, that confidence is basically when you're going out and about doing your day-to-day -day basis, you know, God will give you that uh, in terms of posture that you're focusing forward. Uh, you're focusing on the mission of God for your day-to-day -day activities when you're out and about.
your inner and your, and your outer. So what this is meaning is in terms of standing tall is that your inner root must come from God's word, learning God's word to then be displayed on your outer root. So how you deal with people in your day-to-day -day transactions. And I think particularly the thing um, that's kind of springing to mind, when I used to live in London, I used to go to a service, I think it was on a Thursday, and it, it always this um, few words this um, pastor said has always really stuck with me since. And I, particularly this was referring to an auto call for those that were not necessarily believers or also those that were believers. She said, why do you want to go to the world for what's in the world for you? It's, got, it's offering you nothing, but God offers you something. That's always the thing that was always that auto call that I thought was very, very applicable. So the world's not going to offer you anything, but if you're in God's world, he'll offer you everything. So it's very much within that, it's very much re recommitting yourself or getting committed if you're, if you're new to faith to be a blessed life in God, to standing tall like a tree and also standing with God. So it's very much looking up. So it's interesting when we look to trees and um, it's very much they stand as a group or sometimes on their own and they're very significant. So I think the, the issue I've been feeling over the last couple of weeks with this whole tree scenario is that they are mighty and powerful as what God is, because obviously, you know, he's omnipresent and around you, and obviously it has a powerful force. Think again, obviously some of the trees here, we've got height, power and substance, particularly with the larger trees, they are very significant. And then it, it's that whole rooted in God will give you that strength for day-to-day -day living. Uh, branch so shrub and um, branch so it's very much focusing on the, the, the cross um, and I think particularly with obviously Jesus in his um, when he was taken to the cross obviously used trees as well and then just lastly as well with standing tall it's growth and wisdom so it's that whole day-to-day -day submission of yourself to be rooted in God so I think the it's very much what I wanted to just lastly to conclude with and does apply for the world at this moment as well. And I think particularly even for my own circumstances at the moment, when I'm looking at a tree, um, it's very much focusing on God. So I think sometimes you've got to root yourself in God amidst of all your circumstances that the Lord is with you. And I think it's sometimes standing strong um, and obviously looking heavenward and upward in this situation. That's all for me.